Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Off Farm Income Podcast. Thank you very much for joining us here on our YouTube channel. Well, hey, today we are going to profile a very interesting business called Barnyard Discoveries, and this is an another affiliate business where this is something that everything's been developed that if you're looking for a side business that might help you be able to live where you want, work in agriculture, live that agricultural lifestyle, this is something that you can just slip right into. And I think when you're done hearing this interview with the creator and the owner, Ron Wasson, and hearing about what he gets to do and how he gets to make his living, you're going to be very intrigued. I know that I am. So why don't we just jump into that for you right now? Ron, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's a pleasure to be with you. Oh, well, great. Well, you come highly recommended. I'm looking forward to finding out about your business. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's great. Well, I, uh, I've, you know, I get the luxury of of meeting a lot of very interesting people through doing this show, and then a lot of those people go, "Well, you should talk to this person, or you should talk to that person," and uh, that is the case with you. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Let's start off like this. Tell us just a little bit about you. Kind of give us an introduction, an overview of 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 Ron Wasson separate from from Barnyard Discoveries? Okay, uh, well, I, I think it was probably pretty typical as the as the farm kid. Uh, basically grew up on a grain and livestock farm in central Illinois. Uh, a lot of involvement through 4-H, but then primarily a lot of involvement through FFA programs. Uh, really got involved a lot there. And uh, a lot of competitions and things like that. Uh, made lots of friends and that sort of thing, but uh, kind of opened the doors to a, a lifelong ambition to be involved in agriculture. But, uh, was uh, after school, went back to farm with dad for a few years, and uh, you know, it got to the point that at that time that we were looking at uh, pretty high interest rates and some ridiculous cash rent prices, and we were in that situation that so many families find themselves in as far as it's not quite big enough for two families mm -hmm. and it's more than dad needs himself. But, uh, we had to have that conversation where dad says, well, you know, one of us is going to have to go find a job and I've got seniority here. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I was one, I went into, uh, I went to, uh, got involved in the workforce and worked with the Hampshire swine registry for a number of years, worked with, uh, some sheep magazines, uh, for several years. And then, uh, then got into a into a sales position when I moved into Peoria and uh, ended up having a, a career of, of sales while uh, starting my family in Peoria and uh, mm -hmm. ended up living in, in, in the city for about 20 years that uh, didn't like a single day of it, but uh, <laughs> okay. I was there <laughs> and we, we dealt with it as best we could, but always had an interest, kept an interest in the farm with my dad uh, on the side all the time that I was working on other jobs. We were involved in red livestock and, and sales and things of that nature. So I had an interest in agriculture. Okay. And so today, what's your status today? Are you in town now or are you back out on the farm now? Actually, we were uh, about 10 years ago, we were able to find a small acreage and moved, uh, moved out outside of town. And, but, uh, eventually, Went through a, one of those uh, corporate restructuring meetings one day where uh, the company announced that they were going to have uh, about 900 less sales position nationwide, and one of them was mine. Okay. And so at that point, uh, also found myself at that point that uh, wasn't uh, wasn't nearly as marketable, I guess, as far as my age was starting to work against me a little bit there, okay. and uh, and so I had to. Start looking around for a new job, and uh, ended up ended up having to get creative to make my own. Okay, so you uh, you chose entrepreneurship after all that time. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You know that's interesting. So you're 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 finding yourself in a situation where I don't know you're you're looking around at positions and it's not I guess going the way you want it to go. And so you just you just kind of go, well, what would I like to do? And can I just invent this? Can I just make it happen for myself? Exactly right. And that's just, you know, this is an idea that I had kind of kind of kicked around for in the back of my head for a number of years and things like that. But it's, uh, you know, it it's, you know, it's the same thing that so many people are being being forced to take a look at right now yeah. uh, with, uh, you know, dealing with the with the, the pandemic and everything like that, you know, jobs are you know 
typical jobs, I think, are, you know, it's not going to, I'm not sure what the new normal is going to look like, but I don't think it's going to be the old normal. <laughs> right. So I think this is, you know, if you're looking for the silver lining, it's the blessing in disguise here that a lot of people are going to have some, some new opportunities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, so you going out on your own, you starting your own business is Barnyard Discoveries. Is that the business that you started uh, 10 years ago when this all took place? Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. Give us yeah. no, give us an overview of Barnyard Discoveries. What is it? What is it? What's the business? How's it work? Basically, Barnyard Discoveries. We are uh, we do a mobile farm exhibit, and what we have done uh, started out as far as I, I designed a trailer, had a custom a trailer custom built, a thirty foot trailer custom built mm -hmm. to my specifications, and then we had it bus wrapped but where it looks like a barn from the outside and the bus rep makes it look like there's a barn pulling into the parking lot, basically. Okay. And then as we finish the inside of the trailer, then we put in a big screen TV. We've also got uh, uh, display boxes in there. And then the, the big, the big draw really is that we, we put a series of pins along one side of the trailer and keep animals in those pins. And then with each pin, there's signage over the pin and explain something about that animal. So we've got uh, got it all designed where the animals come, stay in the trailer throughout our visit, but then the, the people that uh, we designed it so it's all handicap accessible. Okay. So we pull in and we drop down the back gate of the back uh, gate of the trailer and folks just are able to walk into the back end of it. And then we've got an, an exit ramp up on the front end. They walk through. Look at each one of the animals, the display signs that uh, there that explain what's going on with those animals, what mm -hmm. all the interesting farm facts about the animals. And uh, we go into, basically, and my idea was to keep it educational, and we pull into like a school, and we, you know, we pull in, drop the gates down, drop the doors down, and have a field trip in the parking lot. Okay. Now, how long is the trailer? 30 foot. 30 foot. And 30 I'm, foot. I'm picturing like a snowmobile trailer where it's got a ramp on the back, then ramps that come off the front. Correct. Uh, yeah. Okay. Very much, very much like that. Yeah. And then do you have livestock with you? you yes. You, okay. So we have uh, the normal lineup uh, for what we have. Uh, let me see if I can, I can kind of walk through it in my mind here as far as when you come into the trailer, the first pen, we have a miniature horse in the first pen. Then we have uh uh, Banny chickens and miniature ducks in the next one. Then we have a, uh, goats in a pen. Then we have a pen with sheep in it. Then we have uh, some some lane uh, a lane hen display with eggs in the nest. And we have a pig and a calf and rabbits. And that's pretty yeah. That's the, that's the lineup of the of the live animals in there. Oh, wow. Okay. Very cool. Now, how do you how do you make money at this business? So how does the how does we, the financial part of it work? It works out as far as we uh, we go on a on a uh, cost per visit basis. As far as we're hired by the by the school, we're hired by the nursing homes where we go. We do a lot of company picnics. Uh, we do a lot of community events, uh, festivals throughout the summer and mm -hmm. fall. We do. Um, a lot of other events as far as we've done weddings, wedding receptions. Okay. And so we go, uh, you know, and we're just, we're always hired by the, by the individual organization that's putting on the event. Okay. So people are paying you to bring this out and to put on this event. Okay. Yep. And so obviously with what's been going on with coronavirus, your business has had a, it's taken a hit, no schools, <laughs> No nursing homes. Right. You don't. We know took that. a hit this spring. Yeah, we're still we're still waiting to see how that works. But uh, you know, I guess I'm encouraged from the whole thing. We had we naturally had a very good uh, you know spring summer or relatively busy seasons for us or some of our busiest times. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, through all of this that we've gone through the last uh, last few months, that uh, no one has asked for their deposit money back is on any of the events that we've had scheduled. Everybody has said, you know, let's just, well, we've postponed the dates. Okay. We've moved them back into later into the fall. And some of them have already just gone on and they've just said, put us down for the same weekend next year. And, you know, that's working out fine for us. So we haven't, 
you know, it's not like we've lost any customers, but we're okay. just, you know, they're all going to be back. Okay. Well, that's great. That's great news. Okay. So you said that you had had this idea kind of in the back of your head for some time. How long, how long do you think you'd had this kind of bugging you in the back of your head saying you should do this? Probably. I think it was probably 10 years anyway that I, that I had come up with it because when we were, uh, when we, when I was, my kids were smaller, uh, they were involved in 4-H, things like that. And they used to raise rabbits mm -hmm. and they, uh, raised and showed rabbits in our, we had the little backyard bunny barn when we lived in town. And so, and they always had friends coming over and we were teaching the friends about, about their, about the rabbits and about the genetics and about mm -hmm. the color genetics and things like that. And, uh, you know, so I knew that there was, there was always going to be interest from that, that direction. And then it, uh, you know, from there, I think that then after that, progression i think it probably went into the next thing then my folks my parents moved uh went through the you know the elderly part as far as we had to go into nursing homes and things mm -hmm. like that and uh, saw that there was a need there and how much joy it brought to those folks okay. and just you know all those things combined i just kept thinking you know i i think you know if i could just capture those two markets that you know there's a need for it out there sure so that's what kind of kicked it into gear that's great man what a great idea so now uh you've been doing this for 10 years correct right uh, yes okay so 10 years so how big of an area are you serving how far will you travel to do this we do uh peoria is located in central illinois and we're about halfway between if you visualize the state of illinois we're about halfway between st louis and chicago okay and so peoria is our i'm about eight or ten miles west of peoria proper itself but we do about a 75 mile radius around peoria okay okay now when you first began when you first got started and i guess even today how do you get the word out to people that you're available how do you make people know that this is even something that exists it's you know it started out basically that i contacted and worked a lot through uh a lot through the schools and you know worked that out where I was doing some public events through the schools <clears throat> and naturally when we were at the schools and things like that then you know moms and dads that were on committees on you know church organizations or on the festival committee for their local town and things of that nature everybody would start to see it and quite honestly we have never really done any advertising as far as I don't oh, really you know as far as paid marketing advertising I, we've really never had to do anything like that we just it's all been word of mouth people see it and okay. they have an idea of where it can be used because it, as i say i when i started i i thought okay i'm going to call on schools and nursing homes and okay. i tell you you know it just it just mushroomed from there okay well you've got a great website um so you've got that aspect built in um but I don't know. Do you do you do you get much business by people discovering your website, or people discover your website after they hear about you through word of mouth? Uh, we get quite a bit of business actually from the from the website. People notice that. I guess our number one naturally is word of mouth. Uh, that primarily, but then the the website does a lot as far as you know, giving them uh, people that may not have been through the trailer themselves or visitors. Physically, you know, see the website and it, it perks their interest and they contact us from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really well done. The pictures on there are really, I like the pictures because I can tell there's a lot of people that don't necessarily have a lot of knowledge about agriculture that are learning about it by going through your trailer. It is amazing. That's, that's been the, that's been the biggest, uh, biggest reward for me is that, you know, I, I look at this, it's one of those things that I didn't. I didn't set out to have a petting zoo. Mm -hmm. That that's never been what I wanted to do. I wanted to have an educational exhibit and uh, try to build that, you know, bridge the gap between farmers and consumers mm -hmm. uh, to be an advocate for agriculture. And I think that if we can expand the knowledge and let people understand agriculture a little better, then it answers a lot of questions for them. So it's, you know, people that come into the, tr come into our display, you know, uh, my biggest reward is for people when I hear, hear a lot of times the parents will walk in and think that they're bringing the kids in to just pet the animals and things like that. And 
when you get inside and see all the educational materials that we have posted and we do a lot of explanations and things like that on the different displays. And then when parents walk out at the end of the program and, and say, I had no idea, or I didn't realize that a cow drank that much water, or I didn't mm-hmm. know how often that chicken laid an egg and things, you know, they find out something new about agriculture. So those are the big rewards for me. Sure. That's great. So now was there a point when you were developing this? I mean, I knew you'd had the idea in the back of your head for some time. Then you made it happen. Was there a point once you got started where you went, okay, this is really going to work. This is going to, you know, it's going, the vision I had in my head is actually going to come to fruition. Yeah. It, yeah. I think it was probably, actually it was fairly early on. In fact, as far as when, when I started, you know, when people started calling or I started getting offers for uh, people wanting us to come to their events, mm-hmm. things that I hadn't dreamed of. That, uh, okay. really. So I, so I realized at that point, you know, that it was, that it was a workable idea. That is great. So you'll go to these festivals or I, I, I know it's nursing homes and schools, but as I'm looking at the pictures on the website, I'm seeing fairs and festivals and things like that. Um, so the fair, the festival, they'll hire you, uh, just from a business model standpoint, they'll hire you, they'll pay you. And then the, the, the people that are attending the festival, they can just walk through, without some sort of admission into your trailer or something like that. Is that right? right? It's, you know, it's one of those things as far as when you start, when you talk about the fairs and festivals, it's another attraction okay. uh, for them as it, much like they would, you know, if they're going to have uh, uh, the bounce houses are there or something like that, it's an attraction that they incorporate into their, you know, into their fair or festival. Okay. So you've got pigs in there. You've got a, it looks like a little Jersey calf. Uh, you've got the rabbits, of course, the rabbits, they're not going to grow as big, but of course the pigs and the, and the cattle, they're going to get big. So how often do you have to replace with, with new animals? We're, we usually do about a, about a 70 to 80 day transition on the pig and the calf okay. usually. And those are usually the only ones through us through the year that we have to have to switch out on a regular basis type okay. thing. Uh, other animals come and go naturally, but it's, uh, but the pig and the calf we work with, uh, we've got a, a large sow complex that we work with that we've got access to a healthy pig when we need it that way. And then we also have a, a large dairy, uh, that we work with that always seems to have a little bull calf that needs a new home. Mm-hmm. And so we're able to work with them. So we've got, we've developed, once we found those that, that worked, uh, you know, helped us a lot as far as being able to access the animals that we need okay all right so now today is this is doing this your sole form of income yes it is it's worked out to be real work out to be a real nice business it's uh it's one of those that's really really come around and uh helped us a lot as far as we've proven now the 10 years we've got a a business model that we've worked out that Mm -hmm. we've proven uh proven success with and uh so now we're at a we're at a point now where we're actually taking the a next step now. Okay, are you able to say what that next step looks like? Uh, yeah, I think you know we're we're starting now. We're developing an affiliate program. Awesome. Where we're going to you know not franchising so to speak, but we've got to develop mm-hmm. an affiliate program where we're taking the business model that we have now and offering it out. Uh, you know, our only limitation with the business is just our physical limitation as far as the geographics, right? We can, we can service about 75 miles around our population area that we have here. Beyond that, it gets, you know, with the animals in the trailer, travel time, expense, things of that nature, it starts costs gets into the, be a little more prohibitive when we start dealing in something like that. So this, you know, we've got it set up now where we've got to work the bugs out. We've, we've, made a lot of mistakes Mm -hmm. uh we invested a lot of money some of it good some of it we'd rather have a chance to do over but uh but now we've got it to the point where we're we can actually go out now and and we can help other people start this business in their own community Mm -hmm. so that's what we're looking that's our next step right now is just to you know to take it to you know we we're ready to go nationwide at this point very cool so we've profiled uh, something similar to this on the show before, which is, well, I guess describe to everybody what it means when when they become an affiliate, how is that helping them if they want to start this business? 
number one, uh, affiliates going to save you a lot of money from the standpoint as far as, you know, uh, not not having to make the mistakes. You're going to be coming up with a, a proven business program that's already there. We're going to develop, uh, we'll have a network of, uh, of other affiliates that we work with where we'll still be using, utilizing our website and directing directing through our website we can direct them to local local contacts where the where they can come in contact with the affiliates in their area um, we do a you know a, a training program we'll be able to offer training on an annual basis and then we also have uh, you know we're on hand there that we've got when we developed it you know, we went through the expense of you know developing the website uh, you know, developing the, the bus wrap for the trailer. The trailer mm -hmm. itself, uh, you know, was quite an investment there. And we've copyrighted the development, the, the bus wrap there. We've got, uh, even on the design of the trailer itself, I mean, everything about the trailer was custom, custom built or custom made mm -hmm. with a purpose in mind. I mean, you know, from the, from the location of the windows to the, to the location of the lights, how many lights we need, or we've made mistakes. We've tweaked it and we worked it up now where we get to, you know, we've got all those things, even, you know, where the outlet placements are so that the, so the animals can't come and talk contact with the outlets and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of those things about the trailer that are you know, very specific too. Gotcha. Now, one of the things we try to do here on this show is give people ideas that, that will allow them to use entrepreneurship to either allow them to live where they want uh, or allow them to to focus on developing a farming lifestyle, an agricultural lifestyle, a rural lifestyle. Uh, would you recommend this business as something that, that could be replicated that that people might be able to accomplish this uh, doing this? It's exactly it's as I you know as I mentioned earlier that uh, you know I was one of those that was caught in that situation. The young guy that came back to the farm that wanted to farm wanted to stay there, but there just wasn't enough for both families on the farm. Mm -hmm. And so you need that, you know, that, that alternative revenue stream, you need that extra revenue stream coming into the farm. You can still focus on the farm or you can still live on your small acreages, whatever like that. If you've got an interest in agriculture, this gives you a whole new opportunity to look at a way that, uh, you know, that can be, if you work it right, it, you know, if you want to put full-time efforts into it, you can make a full-time income mm -hmm. if you want to work it as a side business to a farm well number one you know you're out there being an advocate for agriculture so you're already doing a you know something positive for your own farm basically right a lot of the people have a lot of the things as far as the animals and things like that they may already have them on their farm mm -hmm. but it's a you know one of those you can work it as hard as you want so you can bring in the business that you want to as a side just in, you know, another revenue stream coming into that farm business. Yeah, that's great. All right. Well, let's do this really quick. So what are some pieces of advice that you could give folks, uh, either if they want to go into an affiliate relationship with you, if, if this is a business uh, type that they're interested in, as they're researching it, as they're getting started, what are some of the mistakes that you made that you could help people from making, you know, as they go forward? I think that, uh, you know, primarily a lot of those things are, that's why we're doing the affiliate program is because we want to, you know, I can just see this working in, you know, virtually every community around. That's, mm -hmm. you know, we get, as I said, our, our biggest problem is that we get, uh, we get calls from, you know, I get calls every day from people that are 200, 300 miles away. I get calls from Ohio and, mm -hmm. you know, Indiana and things like that. And I just, you know, I can't service them. Like right. That. But if there were, if there was a, one of these businesses there and, and, you know, every, every town's got, you know, got schools, got nursing homes, got uh, uh, daycare centers, things of that nature. So they've all been community festivals and community events going on. So they've all got, got access to that type of thing. So they can get involved in there. There's a need in the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that uh, the biggest thing is that we can, we've already been through it, we've done it, we've made mistakes, and we can help help explain how to reach those different venues, and we can also explain, you know, where we've made, where we've made mistakes, where we've spent money that didn't need to be spent, uh, where we should have spent more type thing. So I think that the, one of the big benefits is that we can just offer that to someone else now as we go forward. 
they can just pick up a you know basically a turnkey business and be ready to go in their own home area right now yeah all right well let's talk some more general uh things in business for a minute just through your experience as being an entrepreneur uh when you first were starting this 10 years ago did you write a business plan it, yeah, okay. it was a very, you know, it was basically a, a very brief business plan, but this was, a, you know, it, uh, you know, like a one page business plan, but it was, you got to have some kind of roadmap. Mm -hmm. That was, that was mainly it. Okay. So you wrote the business plan, you kind of sketched out the idea. Now, how close have you stuck to that original plan? Oh, uh, it was... You know, we we've done pretty pretty well as follows. Excuse me, as far as following the business plan, you know, I think that it's once I, you know, the biggest sales job I probably made was, you know, I went to my family and said, you know, to my wife and kids, I said, okay, you know, I want to do this, and and so they, you know, they said, well, okay, let me get this, let me understand this. You dad wants to go get a trailer and put animals in it and drive it around to places, and people will pay him. Uh -huh. And, you know, that's basically it. You know, that's what I was wanting to do. And uh, once we got over that hump and, and explained, the, you know, how it was going to work, it uh, it was just kind of, well, we believe in you kind of. Go ahead and try <laughs> it and see how it works out. So, yeah, we believe in you kind of and we'll really believe it once you prove it. Yeah. And, it, and, and it's one of those things, too. When you start talking about it, Matt, and in regard to a, an additional income stream for a farm or something like that. It's, you know, it's a very small, a very small investment. I mean, it's a, a good investment, but a small investment comparatively as far as, you know, you know, I mean, you can go out now and, and you could go out and spend that much money on a grain auger and, mm -hmm. you know, what are you going to get out of that? You know? Right. So, you know, when you look at it as, as another tool or another piece of equipment that you put onto the farm, that gives you access to make money with it. It's going to be a lot better than most grain augers or other pieces <laughs> of equipment in terms of returns. Absolutely. Absolutely. So did you, when you first started out, did you incorporate, did you make it an LLC? Did you say a sole proprietor? How'd you do that? We, uh, we didn't initially, but then we did develop, we went into an LLC. Okay. And so, you know, that always leads to the next question, which is about liability. You've got animals, you've got people walking through your trailer. So how, how did you deal with that? And I'm just asking, because I know you've got proprietary things that go with the affiliate uh, business. I'm just asking in general business terms, there might be somebody watching this or listening to this that they've got a different business idea, but we can help them uh, navigate some of the other aspects of business. So how did you deal with that liability aspect when you were first starting or was it a concern? Well, oh yeah, naturally it was a concern. It's, uh, you know, I think in our society it has to be a, and because there is a certain amount of, a certain amount of risk involved, obviously, anytime mm -hmm. that you're dealing with the public and dealing with animals, obviously. So, uh, the liability was a big issue for me mm -hmm. and we were fortunate that we found, uh, we were able to go deal with the, an insurance firm that was able to write the liability insurance for us on a, of what I consider to be a very economical basis. But uh, then I've, as I've gotten more involved in the business, I'd start looking around and there are so many things now as far as, you know, there are a lot of the ag tourism programs out there. Uh -huh. And in, you know, with, with the development of the ag, ag entrepreneurship, excuse me, there have been, you know, it's kind of been, okay, now there's, there's a need out there. The insurance industry has come on board and say, okay, well, we can insure that. So, you know, you start thinking about that as far as, you know, the, the corn mazes, the pumpkin patches, the, right. you know, the things of that nature, the, the goat yoga, uh, you know, the even rodeos and even horse shows and things of that nature, they all need that insurance. And there, there are specific uh, insurance firms that actually mm -hmm. just, catered primarily to that business so we worked into a lot of those too okay now i'm assuming going back to barnyard discoveries and the affiliate program i'm assuming the right person for this business is a people person yeah i think that's you know that's very important it uh you know i wouldn't say that it's a, a deal breaker really but it, okay. it is very important yeah okay 
Well, if you're the curmudgeon that sits in the corner and scowls at people, that let's put, I'll put it a different way. This is probably not the business for you. Yeah, that's you know that true. That want to have a passion for agriculture. Number one, that's you know you have to be passionate about agriculture. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. That doesn't mean that you have to farm you know a thousand fifteen hundred acres or anything like that. But you have to have that uh, that desire in your heart, though, to that to understand. You don't even have to be a farm kid, I uh -huh. guess, as far as that goes. You know, but you have to understand the importance of agriculture and what it means to our society mm -hmm. today. Okay, so back to your affiliate program. Somebody is listening to this. They go, "Hey, I want to be involved." This sounds like what I've been looking for. Give us a ballpark in what they're looking at at startup capital in terms of what they're going to need to get going in Barnyard Discoveries or with Barnyard quite, Discoveries? Quite honestly, I think we've kind of got it worked out to the point where you, you know, to equip your trailer, to, to buy your trailer, to equip the trailer, to get in business, you're probably looking in that uh, 20, twenty four to $28,000 range, okay. to be honest. Okay. That's so, why I compared it to a, you know, uh, a piece of farm equipment when right. you start looking at investment. Okay, so twenty four to twenty eight thousand, and that's the trailer and the equipment that goes in it. Um, assuming you've got a pickup to pull it with already. Basically, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, you know, that's. I guess I, I I've never, never included <laughs> the truck in it because it's right. you know I just always thought oh you know every in my mind everywhere that you go there's a pickup sitting there so right. I guess that's just of it yeah right yeah and generally people in general I would say folks that are interested in this lifestyle probably got a truck but uh but maybe not that might be something no and, and it takes know. a pretty good sized truck a 30 foot trailer you know right. we're talking you know we're probably talking it's, it's probably going to have to be a three quarter ton truck. okay so at least a three quarter ton so that's good to know okay now over time so you started 10 years ago here we are 10 years later how has your business grown or have you added different i would say products or services but maybe i'll say different exhibits, different animals. I mean, how has that developed over time? It's a, uh, you know, we've had a lot of things. One of the things that we do in the trailer, we do have, as I mentioned, we do have a, a, a big screen video in the trailer. So okay. we're playing, we've always got things going on in there, depending on the event that we're at. A lot of times there's so much material available now through the, the American Farm Bureau, uh, through the National Cattlemen's Association, through the, you know, the American wool producer, things like that. Every every commodity group has things available that they've gotten. So it's, uh, you know, we have no trouble finding access to that type of material. Uh -huh. A lot of the times we're, most of the time, we're playing videos on the, on the big screen there as far as farm equipment, working in the fields, uh, explaining things, what, to, you know, what they're dealing with as far as in planting season and what the, you know, that's a, you know, that's the combine working there and how it, how the combine works, things mm -hmm. of that nature. And we get into the different commodity groups as well, but uh, each display, and we kind of keep that, we try to keep that all fresh. We've gotten a lot of, uh, we've done a lot of research with different organizations, different commodity groups and things like that to keep our, our farm facts fresh and uh, we change those periodically. Uh, the standard group of animals is pretty much the same through our display every year, it seems like, but mm -hmm. we do switch out once in a while. We'll have, uh, you know, once in a while we'll, uh, you know, in the fall, if we're out doing fall events, we'll, uh, a lot of times we'll pop and be a turkey in the trailer instead okay. of the, instead of the goats or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we do things differently throughout the year on stuff like that as well. Okay. And then are, is this something that an owner operator can do or do they need to hire staff? Uh, this is basically an owner operator or a family business, but, okay. uh, you know, uh, one person, one person can do it. Uh, probably two people works better just because that, uh, you know, with the animals and things like that, we usually have, uh, one person at one end of the trailer and another person at the other, okay. at the other, because you're answering a lot of questions, you okay. know, and, but, but you don't have to be farmer to know the answers to these questions basically sure. they're pretty basic questions and that's been was surprising to me and, and my wife was a city girl and she's she's in there with me all the time now and and you know she can answer any question that comes up basically but it's uh you know there 
one person can pretty well do it. But uh, the other thing, when when I have others, I have people volunteering to help all the time. Okay. And that's, you know, I've got retired farmers that like to go with me and help out once in a while. Mm -hmm. uh, retired teachers that like to go with us that, that help out. And then we've got, uh, we've got a high school, a uh, local high school who's uh, the kids need to have uh, so many social service hours to mm -hmm. help out to get their graduation. They volunteer. They'd lots rather do the volunteer here than a lot of the other options they have. 4-H uh, and FFA groups make a call. You know, uh, the FFA has always got kids that are going out and mm -hmm. uh, wanting to volunteer to help out on something like this. And those those kids work, you know, they're the, the best there are to have a 4-H or FFA kid in there helping out and okay. explaining things that are going on. So, um, so there's really – Hired labor is not an issue. There's not. Uh, there's no labor cost involved. To me. Okay. I was thinking about the questions you get. Uh, so you don't have, you don't have people in there asking, you know, what the pH in the rumen is on a Jersey calf or something like that. No, we really don't. Uh, they probably more accurately when it comes to the Jersey calf, they'll ask if that's a deer or uh, <laughs> cam. He's been confused for a camel too. So you know, it's. It's surprisingly it, and a little bit sad for me as far as the fact that, you know, anymore we get into some of our school visits and things like that. We're mm -hmm. in some inner city visits and honestly, you know, we're identifying animals for the kids. Okay. Uh, that's, I, you know, something that I never related to before, but it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, anymore – Sadly, there are a lot of these kids that come from homes that that nobody even reads the storybooks to them, and they uh, don't. You, know, you say three little pigs, and they got no clue what you're talking about. Oh I think. Boy. And you know, they don't. They can't identify the pigs. They don't know mm. if it. You know, they've never touched chickens, or you know, didn't have any idea that eggs came from the chicken and a Kroger. You know? Yeah. Well, then you're doing a very important service, obviously. Uh, we I, hope so. Yeah. So, do you have a time of year where you find yourself the busiest? I really thought I was going to be busy for about four or five months out of the year, but uh, we are naturally, we have a busier season, but last year we, we had events every month of the year. Okay. Uh, in central Illinois, naturally we have to deal with weather. We have to mm -hmm. deal with wintertime weather. We've got, you know, I'd say we've got our seasons probably eight to nine months long, basically uh, January and February are tired, you know, tough because just, Weather is unpredictable, things like that. We go, we still do a lot of events. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, Christmas open houses, mm -hmm. uh, Christmas walks, uh, community walks, and things like that. So we work right up until the the week before Christmas, and then in uh, in January, February, we get involved in things like some inside events in civic centers. As far as uh, pull the trailer right into the civic center, we've done. We've got a local university here that. Uh, we pull in and uh, they'll have us pull into the, the building and set up next to the ticket booth with basketball games. Okay. And so we're doing pre games for basketball games, things mm -hmm. like that. So, you know, we've worked it out uh, where we've got to, you know, we're, we're pretty busy standard through, through, you know, from March to January is pretty, pretty steady for it. Okay. Now you spent, you spent the bulk of your career working for other people then became an entrepreneur later. Was there was there any resistance or was there any fear or anything like that that you had to overcome to finally start your own business? Well, I think that you know the 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 entrepreneur spirit was there because I was born into it as far as being born and raised on a farm. Okay. So that you know that's that's genetic, I guess, in that situation. But but the becoming an entrepreneur spirit though was you know it uh, was also at a time where I had a wife and kids, a family to support, and so. You know, it's it's scary, right? You know, to, to step out there on your own and to to go out there and kind of, you know, there's no net and you're just going to taking uh, putting confidence in yourself and you're giving, you know, you've got to give it your best shot. But mm -hmm. if you've got the work ethic, you know, that's if you've got the work ethic, you can find a way to make it. That's great. Well, this has been really interesting to learn about. I'm intrigued by this, Ron. It, it sounds like a great business. Uh, if folks listening, if they would like to get more information, they want to learn more, where should they go to do that? Basically, our website, we've tried to keep everything uh, pretty concise on our website. 
That's just www.barnyarddiscoveries.com. And they can go to the website. Uh, all the information is on the website. And then there's also a, a short video, uh, about a 90-second video that gives you a tour of the trailer itself okay. and uh, explains that part of it. So it's uh, an opportunity to see it. You know, to put a visual with it that way. Okay. And, and then I'm available by, you know, that's got my phone number on okay. there, and I'm I'm always willing to visit on the phone. Okay, perfect. So if there's a question somebody's got that I did not ask you, they can call you there. Exactly. That yeah. is great. Well, what a great business, and what a great thing you're doing for agriculture. Thanks for, uh, thanks for finding a creative way to advocate for agriculture while supporting yourself. I think that's great. Well... It's been, uh, it, it's really worked out well for us. And we've got, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, you know, there, there are financial rewards, but then it's also one of those that uh, you, you, you sleep very well at night and your heart's full <laughs> when you go into those places and see people leave with a smile. That's great. Thank you for coming on and join us, joining us, sharing all of this today, Ron. Pleasure. Thank you, Matt. Well, thank you for being here, everybody. Special thanks to Ron Wasson for coming on and sharing all that information with us today. And as always, enjoy your journey to the ultimate lifestyle business, agriculture.